knowledge is is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to include it in a fruit salad. <laughs> Although, if you can sell a fruit salad, isn't that just salsa? <laughs> Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is PhotoLog. Hey, Stuart. How's it going? Hey there, Ben. Doing well. So uh, today we have a ton to talk about. This is going to be an incredibly packed episode. We're going to do our best to stay on topic here. Um, So we are talking about how to make a photography website. So a lot of you are stuck at home and uh, you've got time on your hands. So now is the perfect time to work on making a website. If you don't have one, get one. Um, If you do have one, give it a refresh. And we're going to talk about um, everything from broad hosting to a little bit of philosophy and aesthetics down to really nitty gritty granular stuff that you can do to uh, make a website and make it make it better. Yeah, so. this is a big topic, so we got a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're going to speed through this. First, we're going to talk about hosting. Uh, if you already have a host and this part doesn't interest you, check out the show notes or the description, and you can skip ahead. There will be a time code there where we talk about the rest of the website stuff. So, Stuart, take it away. Excellent. So, starting from the ground level at on hosting, uh, there are essentially two main ways to do this. One is... Uh, getting a hosting, a separate hosting provider yourself. So hosting, for those of you that are not familiar, it's your website has to live somewhere. It's like it's like a, f- you know, like any file on your computer. A file, which is your website, has to live somewhere to be served to any of your uh, potential customers, um, your client base. So um, it needs to live somewhere, and that hosting company provides that place where your website lives. And uh, there are two main ways to do this. One is to get a separate hosting provider. Um, Ben and I both use Namecheap, uh, which they both do domains, but they also do hosting. Or you can get kind of an all-in package where it's a hosting provider and they also have a website builder on top of it. Something like Photoshelter or Squarespace or WordPress.com versus WordPress.org. So Photoshelter is the one that uh, if you love photography blogs, they pay the hardest for advertising yeah, and like all to... of the big names love <laughs> Photoshelter. Um, Photoshelter is rather expensive though. So I'm sure it's great, but it's about $50 a month. Yeah. Whereas um, Squarespace by contrast is between 12 and $40 a month, depending on your package. So depending on you what can... features you need. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you can build quite the website on uh, $12 a month on Squarespace if you really want to go that direction. Uh, Ben and I, like I mentioned before, both went with a separate hosting provider with uh, Namecheap in our case. And uh, that that you have a little bit more work. It's not quite as set and forget it. You do need to update some things yourself, but pretty much they have a they have a user interface that you log in when you buy your hosting from them and you click install WordPress and tell it which domain you want it installed to, uh, your, you know, .com or .me or .photo or whatever you have. And then uh, and then you have WordPress installed and then it, and then you just work in WordPress just like any other uh, you know, WordPress.com installation or any other pre-installed piece of software, then it's ready for you to go. You do occasionally have to update things, but again, that's mostly in WordPress itself. So it's not quite set it and forget it. There's a little bit of setup, but it's not too bad once you get going. And then you have ultimate power of your website. You can do whatever you you want with it. And that is the, that is the beauty of that. It's a little bit more to get going, but you've got everything. Uh, You've got all of the power. A few other options that uh, I would mention is I know people like SmugMug. Uh, SmugMug mm-hmm. is really good if you're like a fine art photographer and you're literally selling your photos. Yes. Yeah, but Smug otherwise, cool I don't that. like it that much as a like a portfolio or mm-hmm. a website. Um, I know people use Wix. Uh, I haven't used it except when it was flash only way back in the day. So I, I'm not familiar. I, but I would steer people. Uh, Wix is fine, but I would steer people towards Squarespace if you want something like that like experience. a website builder yeah. right yeah, exactly. so exactly. so one thing that i would say is no matter who you're using for uh your hosting um 
it is not a set it and forget it. You should be going in and updating it. You should be, you know, mm. adding pages or portfolios or changing your info as needed. Mm -hmm. So you need to get something that you can easily change and update. Um, if you need, if your friend helps you set it up for the first time, that's awesome. But if you need help every time you have an edit, that's bad. Exactly. So, so yeah, <laughs> uh, we recommend WordPress, but there are a whole host of options. Um, you are going to be paying for your website either in money or time. Yeah. So. Uh, whatever you have more of might help you determine uh, the service that you use, but you will be paying for it mm -hmm. for one of those two. Some quick napkin math on that, to just to kind of give you a comparison. Uh, Squarespace at the low end is 12 bucks a month. Um, like our hosting that Ben and I have are, uh, it's roughly $6 a month. So it's, you know, half the price. It's way, way, way cheap, especially compared to something like Photo Shelter. But we paid for that by doing more of the work ourselves. Um, I think mine's like four bucks a month. Oh yeah, your my, yours might be even cheaper. I've got a few more websites, um, so mine's a little bit more expensive. But even then, my I expensive have option. Is, I have six websites and it's four bucks a month. So yeah, yeah, exactly. The the expensive option there being six dollars a month is still super reasonable. Um, takes a little bit of setup, but you do you do save you know, literal dollars long term by spending a little bit more of your time in uh, uh, as a result. So uh, it's it's certainly the way that I would recommend people go. Uh, just make sure that you're ready for a little bit of learning, a little bit of startup time, and uh, then you'll be great. Then you'll have something that you have ultimate control over. And that is a real big value. I think that covers hosting for the most part, right? Yeah, think, that that covers hosting for sure. So uh, now we'll be at the timestamp where everyone is skipping forward to. Mm -hmm. So if you're just now joining us, <laughs> you have a website. Um, you have a website, <laughs> or at least you have, you have your hosting something setup. installed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, for the purposes of the rest of this conversation, we're just gonna assume Word WordPress. Um, mm -hmm. If you use something else, this is all still valid. Still keep listening. But um, yeah. if we get into some of the nitty gritty, we are specifically talking WordPress. Exactly. We won't um, be too specific to WordPress's exact little idiosyncrasies, but that is what we're talking about. Yes. So um, I, I kind of really wanted to talk about um, a big picture, um, aesthetics, and as I was kind of outlining this episode, um, I realized that a lot of this is more about thinking about the philosophy of your website. And I know mm -hmm. it sounds a little frou-frou, but I seriously think that all of this is really important. So your website is your face to the world. It is your storefront. And um, I, I, I have an idea here that I, I want to do. So I am going to give us a moment of silence here, and we're going to count how long this is. All right, are you ready? And go. That feels like it took forever, and that was five seconds. So uh, <laughs> if your site takes longer than that to load, people are already gone. You've mm -hmm. lost them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every um, second longer that your site takes to load, <laughs> you are losing more and more and more potential customers. So I'm sure we is... lost a bunch of people with that five second gap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the listeners are gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so so it is super important that you put your best foot forward at very beginning and that mm. everything loads fast. Um, and there is actually a technical trick to getting stuff to load fast. And I think you can explain that a little better than I can. Yeah, certainly. So there are actually a, a, you know, a few different things that lead to load times. Um, one is just having a, a good host. You know, uh, a lot of people, you know, want to go all the way and they're like, well, can't I host it off of my own computer in my house? Eh, probably not a good idea. You want it at a legit hosting provider, somebody that can keep it online and as fast as possible, uh, at, you know, every single second of the year. Uh, that's the first thing to do is is go for somebody legit and uh, don't go for a hosting provider that's too small. You need somebody that's got a lot of servers that can really get your website out there uh, everywhere as as good as they as they can. Um, that being said, past that point, it's all up to you. Uh, in the case of WordPress, uh, it has a little bit of a reputation for being kind of heavy for increasing load times, but that can be diminished significantly by implementing something called caching, which is basically you take your site and you make it as compressed, as small, as efficiently packaged as possible so that when it's sent out to 
somebody who loads it up, who wants to look at your work, who wants to hire you, it gets to them as quickly as it can. Um, now, WordPress caching, uh, a lot of that is increasingly built into WordPress itself. But if the built-in features are not sufficient for your use, you have some specific caching you want to do. You want to cache images a certain way over text. You want to do some particular setup. There are uh, tons and tons and tons of plugins that you can choose from to go after that particular feature. But definitely implement caching. It will speed up your website hugely. It is well worth it. And it's, for the most part, a one or two click thing. Like you install the plugin and you say, okay, cool, cache my site. That is a set it and forget I mean, it. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. And then it's set it and forget it. And sometimes you might have to clear it. Sometimes you might have to, you might have made an edit to your site and the new cache isn't generated yet. And you refresh yet. it. Yeah, yeah, you refresh the cache. But it's literally just a button at the top that says, yeah. refresh the cache and then you're good to go. And then your site will load super, super quick. So the definitely implement caching. Absolutely. The other two things um, that speed up your website that I definitely wanted to talk about were um, image optimization. Um, and mm -hmm. what I mean by that is if your about me photo is displaying on your website as 600 by 900 pixels, upload a 600 by 900 pixel photo. Yep. Don't upload your full 22 megapixel image and downsize it because that will take forever. That will slow down your load times, yeah, um, especially size... with your gallery when you have a dozen photos size media appropriate for their use and and really their size on the page like the, people get trapped in this a lot and i totally understand because it's not very intuitive where you put an image up and you resize it and it looks small on the page and you think okay well we're good to go you're not actually good to go what what happens is when somebody loads in your website it loads the huge image and then it basically instantaneously scales it to be small on the page but because you're loading a huge image, the site takes forever. And if you've got lots of those on the page, it takes a long time to load in. So size images appropriately. If you if you need to have some sort of you know thumbnail preview image that you click to get a larger version, great. Make two versions, a small one that loads immediately for the thumbnail and a larger one that it's linked to to have that blown up higher detail version. A, uh, a specific instance on my website, mm -hmm. uh, just for some raw numbers for you guys. Um, one of the images on my website is about 100 kilobytes um, on, on one of those pages. And the original file, JPEG file, not even, you know, the huge one, is three and a half megs. Yeah. and that, So that's... that is like, what, 35 times bigger. And not only that, but I think that one original JPEG is probably multiple times larger than your entire page load size when somebody goes to your website. Yes. So I actually think that one JPEG, <laughs> that one full size JPEG is legitimately three times bigger than the entirety of my website. So yep. optimize your your images. Uh, the last Hugely thing that um, that you can do to speed up your website is to load in sequence. So um, exactly. this means that you have text and you have images. Um, if you only have one, that is a problem. <laughs> but uh, that means that uh, whatever is fastest or first on the page loads in first. Yeah, so, so load text first and then images later. Load stuff at the top of the page first and the bottom of the page later so that as people scroll down your page, if it is taking a little bit longer to load, stuff loads ahead of them do things like that it's off the screen but it's still coming in yeah. exactly exactly and there, there are different ways to do that caching will help a lot with that just kind of naturally there are all sorts of plugins it depends sometime on your theme or your framework a lot of themes do that um automatically most yeah. most good themes should do that automatically but that's something to look for like when you load it look and see if it's loading things in sequence and uh, if it is, you're probably good to go. If not, definitely. If you look get like a for... white screen and don't see anything while it's waiting for photos to load, that means you're not loading. That in means sequence. you're not loading in sequence. Yeah. So definitely take a look at your site when you put it when you start putting it together. Make sure things are loading in sequence. If they're not, make that happen. <laughs> you know, whether it's a plugin or it's, or it's a new theme or it's an adjustment or an option for your theme, make sure things load in gracefully, load in sequence, and uh, you'll be good to go. Sure. So uh, we had a couple more philosophy things I kind of wanted to go through. Yep, yep. Um, one more big one is that uh, this website is not for you. That sounds silly, but it's not about it's you. It's for your client. It's for the person who's going to hire you to do photos or video, or it's for the person that if you're selling fine art prints is wants to buy that print It's for the consumers, for the client. It is not for you. So mm -hmm. something that you think is really cool, if it makes the user experience for them bad, it's bad. Don't do it. 
Mm-hmm. This is the the common phrase of uh, the customer is always right. This is a scenario where that is extremely true. One hundred percent. Yeah. If you, it, no matter how cool you think your particular idea or concept or whatever is for your site, if it doesn't make sense to your clients, it does not work, and it, you will literally lose money over it. So yes. Um. So put that stuff aside and really approach your website from the perspective of an outsider of a potential client and what would make sense to them and what would work well for them and go from that point of view, not necessarily your own personal point of view. Yes. Um, so since this is a photography website, it's super, super important that when you're thinking about them, you put them first and what they want to see is your images. Mm -hmm. So put your images first. I've seen so many websites where the first page is just a huge block like huge on the screen that just says, hi, my name is this. I love puppies and rainbows and I'm a wallflower. I'm like, oh my God, no (laughs) one cares. This is not about you. Show me your work. Show me your images. Exactly. You're, you're (laughs) what, you know, what, what is, what, you know, what is your daily day-to-day work? You're, if you're a photographer, show me that work. Show me the images. Yes. Don't show me some giant block of text with your face as nice as it might be. Um, show me what you do and then get to the other stuff later. So yeah, with all of that in mind, um, the last couple of things are you want to make it as easy on them as possible, uh, whether it is, uh, they're trying to find a certain gallery or whether they're trying to find your email so that they can book you make all of that super easy for them. Um, something that makes that harder is when you clutter the page with a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to less is more. We're going to talk, this is going to come up over and over and over mm-hmm. again throughout the rest of this episode, but seriously, less is more. If you aren't sure if you need it, the answer is probably no. Yeah. Yeah. What, what should be on your page is I know this has to be here. There is no way that this cannot be here. Yes. And less is more. If it, if it absolutely needs to be there, great. If it doesn't, then get rid of it. And really go through the stuff that you think absolutely needs to be there and uh, maybe get rid of a few of those things too. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Um, The the last kind of philosophy uh, thing is uh, cut the cutesy crap. Mm -hmm. So, so unless your branding is um, uh, someone who uh, there, there are photographers who do this very well. Uh, They're usually female. Um, The photographers, uh, uh, it is less about the work and more about them as a personality and their Mm -hmm. clients hire them because they love them as a person. So Mm -hmm. their blog is about like their home decor and their house and like just chatting with stuff and like, Hey, I'm a photographer and I had this amazing wedding. And they talk about like all of that type of stuff. Unless that is your business and unless that is what you do, seriously, it just makes it so difficult for clients to find stuff. So specifically, I used to work for a studio that I won't name, but their website uh, currently has 28 pages, which that's too many pages. We'll get to that in a second. But um, the things are labeled like things, ideas, uh, faces, places, kicks. I'm like, what's the difference between a kick, a thing, and a like a idea? I don't what. (laughs) Like the, they like they had all these cute labels, but as a client, I have no idea what any of these things are. Mm-hmm. If it oh. is integral to your branding, fair enough. But if it is not, then if you're just starting out, it is not integral to your branding. Yeah, yeah, Stop it. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that actually rolls uh, neatly into the next thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about the different pages that you should have on your website. So if you shoot a bunch of these random things, um, you should not put your, you know, shoe e-commerce photography next to your high school portraits. These are two vastly different clients. They should have different galleries. Definitely. Uh, and here's here's something else about uh, putting together a gallery. Um, a gallery, just like I mentioned, of like shoes idea or kicks were shoes. Yeah, whatever. Um, the gallery should make sense if they don't have a title for it. So when you look at my work, you see a wedding gallery and you're like, oh, that's a wedding gallery. You see a cosplay gallery, you're like, that's a cosplay gallery. You see my boudoir gallery and you're like, that's a boudoir gallery. You are not confused about what I do when you look at my galleries. If you have one gallery where you shoot race cars and equestrian and senior portraits and tabletop bottle splash photography, what do you do? I don't understand. 
Yeah, the, the galleries should all be thematically consistent and immediately evident. Like the instant you look at them, you know what they are. Yes. And what they represent. So, so the pages you should have on your website, you should have different galleries for different genres. Um, you should have a contact page and you should have a section about you so that people know who they are hiring. Because more and more, they are hiring you as a person, not ABC Photography Company. And nothing else. <laughs> yes, that is it. If you need Stop extra there. pages, if you need extra pages, you probably don't need them at the start, but you will know when you get there when you need them. So like on my page of uh, I opened up a whole new arm of the business, so I have a new page that's specifically for that one thing. But when I first got started about contact and your portfolio, that's it. If you don't have that many images and you only shoot one genre of photography, you can even get away with a one page website. Just, just show the gallery and then right below that have a little about section and at the bottom of the page contact. Remember when we were talking about less is more. So build your website and then delete half of your pages and then delete half of those pages. And then you're probably pretty close. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, and then, so, uh, the last thing on kind of with pages, yeah, if you aren't sure what you need, you probably don't need it. So when mm. you are putting together all of these different galleries, um, something that bugs me to absolutely no end, and we will have a pet peeve section at the end of this episode, but oh, something that bugs me to no end is, um, when someone says I shoot equestrian and sports and bottle splash and seniors and weddings and maternity and e-commerce on, you know, white seamless and jewelry. I'm like, but do you do any of it? Well, yeah, a, a big, super, super varied, gallery or galleries like that is a is a red flag that's like this person is either humongously talented which is possible but, but more likely those people are they're already just, famous like rick yeah, salmon more likely they're just <laughs> mediocre at everything that that will that's that true. will turn clients away maybe you are really proud of all of the different things that you've attempted or experiments that you've done but really you should keep this stuff to just your absolute best work and specifically the work that you want to get hired to do yes so uh so on my website you will see portraits portraits and more portraits that is it mm -hmm. different um, types of portraits but they're all portraits. different types of portraits here's the thing i shoot tabletop e-commerce i sh shoot you know uh, events that aren't weddings i shoot these other things but if i'm not looking to get hired more for that stuff um i don't show it on my website it's perfectly okay to shoot something or do something and not show it. Show the work you want to get more of. Exactly. Um, so I want to talk a little more about portfolios. Um, so when you're putting together a portfolio page, let's just focus on one portfolio. What makes one gallery good? Um, no more than one page. Right? Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. One page because you you need your best best this is the cream of the crop stuff maybe you have thousands of thousands of images in this particular category but what are you i mean what do you want to stand by as your best work of all time that's what your portfolio should represent absolutely not everything you've ever done so so let's just assume that only 24 pages fit on a photo by the way if you're looking for a good number 24 is a good number to yeah. shoot for 24 so images on one page so if you have 24 images on a page, but you have a page two, what goes on page one? The best ones, because mm -hmm. that's what most people will see. What goes on page two? The stuff that wasn't as good as page one. So why even have it? Yeah, Less you ever, is more. You ever hear about how, uh, how there could be anything on the second page of Google results, but nobody will ever know? <laughs> like that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's really true. I, you know, and if, if that's the case for Google, if Google can't pe get people to click on their second page of results... You're not going to get anybody to click on your oh, second page of not. your portfolio. So don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah. Something else uh, about having that second page is it gives more opportunity for people to not like you. So I once had one musician. Um, he uh, played piano at a really fancy high-end restaurant. And I was shooting an event there. And I handed him my card. And uh, later at the end of the night, he came up to me and said, wow, I want you to know that like I pulled your site up on my phone and I looked at your images and I did not dislike a single image. Now that seems like a really weird compliment, but you will be judged by your absolute 
worst image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have good, 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 and mediocre, oh, that's a bad image, good, people think you're super inconsistent and they don't trust that you're going to do a good job for them. Yeah, those those bad images, they are weighted so much more, unfortunately, than really, really good images. You can, you think about like a scale, you have one bad image and and half a dozen good images and that it's one like bad image one. will yeah, drag it down. Sure. Or, or 10 Absolutely. to 1, yeah, anything. Just they're, they're weighted so harshly that you need to be so careful and so selective about what you put on your po portfolio. As always, less is more. Only the absolute best. Yeah. Um, uh, one, one more thing when you're talking about portfolios mm -hmm. is we already talked about uh, not putting things together that make absolutely no sense, right? Um, mm -hmm. but something else that people might not think about because I shoot every kind of portrait. I shoot wedding portraits and boudoir portraits and family portraits and, you know, senior portraits. But here's the thing. No way in hell am I putting my boudoir portraits next to my senior portraits because the mom who's hiring you to shoot her 16 year old does not want to see that. They do not want to associate with that. You will lose those clients. And the person who wants to look like an elegant, sophisticated, you know, um, woman, they are not going to be attracted by your cutesy 16 year olds. You know, they, no, yeah, exactly. don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, this is, you know, we, we, we say, you know, less and less and less, but this is where you can't get away with that. Don't just because we're saying use less and less and less images and portfolios and pages, that doesn't mean that you should put everything into in one, one gallery. No. Nope. Yeah. Into one spot. Definitely separate your, your themes from each other, yes. such as boudoir and senior portraits. Either, either by theme or by clientele. Like yeah, if exactly. I have a corporate side, it would make sense to do all of my product photography and my headshots. And then if I had a family side, it would make sense to do family photos and weddings. Like mm -hmm. if you want to, if you want to lump categories together like that, you can buy clientele, mm -hmm. but absolutely make sure that you're not, you know, crossing the line and putting putting these things together that will make your client uncomfortable and immediately leave your site. Yeah, it's it's like knowledge is is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to include it in a fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> Although if you can sell a fruit salad, isn't that just salsa? Uh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Anyway, don't uh, mix too much. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have anything else to add on the portfolio front? Um, I don't think so. One, one of the things that that kind of will come up with, with portfolios and with different themes or different clientele is the question of, well, do I do... Do I do a portfolio for you know each theme or each client, or do I do a separate site for each theme and each client? Ah, so yes. that is a that is a big question, and I would say uh, a little bit of a difficult question depending on who you are. Oh, uh, it certainly is, it is error on single question. site first, but uh, so so <laughs> go for that it, is man. actually something that I have struggled with so much. Um, so I specifically. Uh, so something that you can do is what I did is so my website, Nom Creative, as in mm -hmm. Om Nom Nom. If you go to Nom Creative, there is a tile on the front that shows you all the different kind of portraits that take you to those galleries. But if you click on wedding, it actually takes you to a subdomain, which is weddings.nomcreative.com. So the thing is, someone who's looking for a uh, photographer for their kids or for their corporate headshots or whatever is not at all interested in seeing your brides and your rings and your shoes. They're, they're not interested in seeing any of that. Um, but the brides want to see all of that. And they want to see what is the album that I get. And they want to know, like, hey, how do you structure a day? And do you have an FAQ about, like, um, what happens if you don't show up? That type of thing. So so I put together a subdomain, so a completely different website that is still looks, feels, and is branded the same way as my main site. So that you don't get confused that it's not me anymore, mm -hmm. um, but that it is kind of multi-site. And then something that I made completely different is uh, when I set up a cosplay photo booth, um, I didn't want all of them getting bombarded by a thousand photos of cosplayers from one weekend at con. So I'm like, that's just its own thing that is not at all connected or related. Exactly. And and what you said with, uh, I'd like to underline that, weddings.nomcreative.com. Uh, just because you have, <laughs> you know, two things that you want to keep separate doesn't mean that they have to have entirely separate domains. You can always make a second site at what's 
called a subdomain where you something dot your domain dot com. Um, so don't shy away from that if that's what you really need to do. But if you're just starting out, definitely stick to a single site. You shouldn't have a second site or a subdomain site or an entirely separate site with its own domain unless you are positive that that is really necessary. That's a separate business or an entirely separate clientele that need and and have earned their own site. Definitely stick with one if you can. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I started with one and it took years for me to get two. And then mm. it took years for me to get number three. So yeah. over the years, I'm adding more and more things to my photography business and that are drop. I'm dropping them in where appropriate, whether it's um, a gallery on the main site or a subdomain or a completely separate site. But starting out one site, you should be very all, comfortable all you with need. your your single site before you branch out like that. For sure. All right, so um, we're getting ready to wrap up this episode, but I wanted to end with uh, just random pet peeves <laughs> and things that we haven't talked about yet uh, that can make your site better or worse. So, Stuart, you got any pet peeves when you're looking at photographers' sites? Oh, yeah. Many, many. <laughs> <laughs> just rattle off a few. Let's and I'd like this. to help them with them, so this is perfect. Um so, it's like whenever anyone has the uh, lens cap on backwards on their lens, I just want to reach out and uh, pull right. it off and flip it for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, go ahead. So a, a big thing, uh, this, this ties in well to your second page of your gallery, which you should not do, or your loading times, is how many clicks does it take to get to different things on your site? You Just as you lose people by having to send them to a second page or by taking forever for your site to load, you will lose people by how many clicks things take to find. So yes. um, I like to talk about websites as shallow versus deep. You want your website to be shallow. I know people don't generally don't want to be shallow, but you want your <laughs> website to be shallow. You where, do. And what I mean by that is all of the content is ideally one click or less deep. You want it right. as easy to surface that content as possible. So like on your website where you've got all these galleries, you click that gallery, you get that content immediately. You don't have to click it and then click something else and then click something else because you're just going to lose clients that way. You're going to lose money that way. A perfect example of this is like uh, on Xfinity. <laughs> mm, yeah. Whoever designed that is the worst. So what, Stuart, what's, what's the TV show you're watching right now? Uh, Catching up on Westworld. That's a good one right now. Westworld. All right. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to go to Westworld, I would have to go to TV shows, TV shows, HD shows by alphabet, uh, get the, what is it? T through Z or whatever. So that I capture that W and then just page down, page down, page down, page down, page down. And the last time I tried to watch a show and counted it, it took me 78 clicks to go from home screen to actually watching the show. So that is what we mean by deep. Don't <laughs> do that. Go shallow. Make it super easy to find it in the first one or two clicks. Yeah, uh, that is that is so key. You're, you're literally losing people by not having things shallow in your site. And really, it your site should be, at least starting out, it should be simple enough that you don't need that many clicks. As we said before, you can potentially get away with a single page, no clicks to get to anything of consequence. Yes. So less is more, less clicks is definitely more and more money in your pocket at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. So um, another big pet peeve of mine is I find a really cool photographer. I want to hire them to take my photo. Where are they? I'm in Seattle. Are you also in Seattle? I hate nothing more than finding a great photographer and being like, oh, you're in Michigan cool <laughs> closed you just wasted so much time and now i'm actively mad at you mm -hmm. so you, in addition to people being able to find your phone number and email that's another pet peeve of like hey i just want to be able to call you if i have something that i need or i want to be able to email you without filling out your form and getting like a oh did the capture work right like if I don't know your contact info and I don't know what city you're in, I'm definitely not hiring you. Make yeah, it, sure that is there. It, it, it wastes your client's time and it also wastes your time because you're going to either get people that get frustrated and just click out and leave. I'm going to hire somebody else that I know is here that I that has easily accessible contact information or they're going to be calling you or emailing you saying, hey, uh, where are you based? And then you have this, this back and forth that wastes your time and like, oh, I'm in Seattle. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't work for me. That's time that you've both spent that's wasted. Or 
or I'm in Seattle. Great. Maybe they want you there, but they don't even bother to contact you because it's not evident in the first place. So right. it wastes your time. It wastes their time and it, it loses clients just drop off. Absolutely. Um, all right. So another, another big question. Should you blog? Oh, should you? Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> so, so uh, here, Stuart, I have a question that I bet you'll get right on the first answer. Hmm. What is worse than not having a blog? Having a blog that you don't update regularly. Oh, <laughs> dead amen. blogs are so bad for you. <laughs> don't if you can't if you can't commit. Really think about it. If you want to have a blog, cool. Are you going to commit to writing? you know, posting things, adding content to that blog. Well, I would think at least weekly. Are you ready to commit to that? Like for the, till the end of time, or at least as long as you're running this business, right? are you going to blog weekly? If yes, if you're like, yeah, I would love nothing more. And that's actually an honest answer. Then cool. If you can't a hundred percent say, yeah, it's and you got should SEO juice and people keep coming back to your site to read yeah. what you did that week. Blogs are great. If you can commit, if you be honest and i'll be honest right now i should not blog and i don't blog because i can't <laughs> commit to it if you look at my social media the thing is uh people are like oh you must not be doing anything because you're not on social media no i'm actually so busy i haven't had time to do it yep. and then on the flip side there it's like yeah i i haven't done anything i don't have anything to post but mm -hmm. like if i'm posting more it's probably because i haven't done anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah so people ask me too why don't you post your instagram all the time oh i'm i'm working i i don't have time i'm, I'm too busy <laughs> I, I i didn't didn't get to it um so yeah honestly just be real with yourself if you can't commit to it probably don't do it uh the only person i know whose blog i follow who updates like three or four times a year is like joe mcnally but hmm. he's joe mcnally so yeah. he, he can get away with that you if you're can't. already famous then fine but if you're not <laughs> then be very honest with yourself and and we are giving you permission to be honest with yourself and say nah i i just i don't want to yes. commit to that that's you heard fine it first. <laughs> you heard it here first yeah. you have permission to not blog <laughs> exactly <laughs> All right. Uh, I think yep. we got time for one more each. Stuart. All right. Uh, one last one. One last one. Uh, if you don't have anything that helps your SEO, you you touched on this just a little bit with blog SEO juice. So what we, what we refer to with SEO is search engine optimization. Basically, it's stuff on your site that lets Google point people in your direction when they look for Seattle photographer, for example. If you don't have your, like we said, location, what you do, some descriptive terms about your business, then Google has nothing to go on to index you and bring you higher up in the rankings when people search for somebody to do the service that you're doing if you're Here. if you're you know if you're a seattle photographer that better be on your site or else so i will, I will pull up my you? website really quick so mm -hmm. it says right on the top of my website right under the menu i'm ben lucas commercial portrait and wedding photographer in seattle washington there you go so not only does that tell everyone immediately who i am and what i do but google sees ben lucas commercial portrait photographer wedding photographer Seattle, Washington. And if you search for any of those things, then it's like, oh, this person put it right at the top. Yep. I'm going to serve that up to you. Yep. That's that's what I'm talking about when, when I refer to having SEO, good SEO on your website is, is those kind of things. I mean, think about anything that you want or any service that you need you probably hit up google or bing i guess if you're that kind of person and Ew. search you know search Hashtag whatever not thing sponsored by bing <laughs> yeah <laughs> well now we blew that <laughs> <laughs> um but you search whatever thing right you search uh you know like you need a plumber seattle plumber right so they they will have on their website something that says hey i'm a plumber and I live, I, I've served the Seattle area. That's how that is brought to you. So think about it from that perspective. If they don't know your website, if they don't know nomcreative.com right off the bat and they can enter that in, then they need some way to find you. And though that SEO, those descriptions, those words, those are going to be really important. Don't put too much of them because then your website looks really cluttered and bad. And you're and you obviously, look like a robot. yeah, and you look like a robot. Um, don't put too much, you know, be, be a human, put normal human phrases and words in your site, but you need yep. to have that stuff or else Google will not be your friend.
I actually, I actually went to a workshop from a photographer who said, here is how you write SEO. And it just sounded like this spam garbage. Mm. And he's like, but it works. And then what happened was Google flipped the script on him and realized, Hey, we're going to start banning people who do that kind of thing. And he dropped from page one to page 28 overnight. Yeah. That used to work. It doesn't work anymore. Don't be a robot. It will, Google will punish you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think, I think my last pet peeve is do you have pricing on your site? So my philosophy about pricing is if you are selling widgets, you're, you're selling whatever this doohickey is, you should have on your site, this costs X mm -hmm. and here's how you can get one. If you are selling a Mercedes Benz, I totally understand it's a high end luxury item and it is pricing starts at, mm -hmm. but you need to have something. You can't just say call for info. Because you can say for like a wedding photographer, pricing starts at $3,000 and people will know, great, he's in my budget. Let's see what he has for me. Or they'll be like, no, I'm looking for a $500 photographer. And then now you just saved both of you some time in aggravation. Exactly. So if you're not going to put out all of your pricing, just lay it out for them, then you should at least say pricing starts at and make that really clear and really evident. If you have nothing, you, uh, not only are you losing out because they're not going to contact you, but the ones who do contact you will, there's a difference between a lead and a qualified lead. If, if my portrait price for family portraits is $300 and I get someone who wanted to spend nothing more than 50, including, you know, a canvas for the wall, they're not my client. I don't, I don't want them wasting my time or their time doing exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste their time. Have that, <laughs> you have that prominent and evident and easy to find, uh, as we said before, not too deep in your site, make it, uh, you know, within a click or two and, uh, and you're golden. You know, uh, if, if, if I have to call you, I'm not going to call you. I will, <laughs> I will, I will call somebody else that has pricing on their site. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. So this has been a super long, super in-depth episode. Uh, we do hope you enjoyed it. Um, my YouTube channel, um, you can find me at nom creative as in om nom nom, <laughs> nom creative on uh, YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, your social media of choice. But my YouTube channel is just tutorials for, uh, photographers. If you're actually watching this on YouTube, it's a podcast. Hey, you can check it out on your podcast choice. But um, so we wanted to bring you some more kind of in-depth, concrete, tutorial-like content. Um, although most of these uh, will be more discussion-based. But we wanted to give you something that you can do right now while you're at home and you have the time. Exactly. And you can uh, find me at uh, Stuart Marlantis on the socials and on the websites. And uh of course, we'll include these links in the show notes as well. Um, if you want to email the show, reach out to us. If you have any questions or comments or uh, anything ideas you'd like us to know. Ideas for future episodes. Ideas, yeah. <laughs> if you want us to cover something or have a have a show idea you want us to take on, then hit us up at hello at photo-op.show. Uh, hello at photo-op.show. Again, this stuff will be in the show notes as well. All right. Well, that wraps it up. Uh, I think next time we have a super fun episode coming at you guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about new photographer mistakes. So what are mistakes that new photographers are making? Um, what, what are the things you wish you know when you were starting out? Look like so. a pro as quickly as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So until next time, uh, thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you then. All right. See you next time. Bye.